As someone who appreciates in-depth reporting so you're smarter about your day, consider a bed that helps you get smarter about your sleep at night. It's time to sleep next level with the Sleep Number Smart Bed. You deserve a bed that gives you a sleep experience like no other. Effortlessly adjusting and responding to you. Learning how you sleep so you learn to sleep better. Night after night. Sleep next level. Unlock your unique potential with a smart bed that can perform as well as you. And now, don't miss Sleep Number's biggest sale of the year where all beds are on sale. Save 50% on the Sleep Number Limited Edition Smart Bed, plus special financing for a limited time. Only at Sleep Number Stores or SleepNumber.com. See store for details. Hello and welcome to episode number 575 woohoo, of Smart Podcast Trashy Books. I am Sarah Wendell, and if you like it when you have a really nice, long episode to listen to, well... Today is your day. It is time for another Heaving Bosoms crossover. The first part of this recap of Dragon Called is up on Heaving Bosoms right now. So you can go listen then and come here or you can just start here. It's totally up to you, but we are all here for your listening pleasure. I'm going to do a quick recap of the book so far because we're starting obviously our recap in the middle. Uh, I will also share the cover copy, but do not worry if you're starting here and then want to go back later. It's fine. But please be aware this part is important. This is so not safe for work. So heads up for that. Here is the cover copy. Desperate for money after her deadbeat brother left her holding the bill for his bail bond, night nurse Andy agrees to take on a mysterious one-time nursing gig. When she finds out her employer is ruthless billionaire and all-around asshole Damien Blackwood, She's determined to get the job done and get out as quickly as possible. But nothing is as it seems when a monster attacks and she is saved by an honest-to-god dragon. Now you know why I'm into this, right? A golden-scaled, 60-foot-long, violent dragon who is clearly Damien's other half. Her world is spun sideways, but she can't forget the way he looked at her. Like coveted treasure, he's desperate to steal away for his hoard. The way he reacted when she discovered his secret. The way... That when he was human again, he asked her for a date. Da, da, da. Fierce and independent Andy doesn't trust easily. The expensive suits and fancy cars and spooky castle can't hide the truth. Damien is extremely dangerous, not to mention a monstrous beast. So you can see why we read this, right? Dragon, 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 dragon. I love things with dragons in them. And I like having a compliment. I love when that happens. This compliment is for Lisa R., you know how there are warnings about imminent weather? There are also celebration and joy alerts right before you enter a room. If you have supported the show with a monthly pledge, thank you. You are keeping me going. You're making sure that every episode has a transcript hand compiled by Garlic Knitter, who is going to be doing a big old transcript this week. Thank you, Garlic Knitter. And you keep me going and you keep the show going. Thank you for supporting the show. If you would like to join, have a look at patreon.com slash smartbitches. Patreon members get bonus episodes, exclusive content, and a really nifty Discord. And monthly pledges start at $1. So have a look at patreon.com slash smartbitches. Support for this episode comes from Love's Sweet Arrow, Chicagoland's first romance bookstore. Love's Sweet Arrow curates a diverse selection of traditionally and independently published romance and offers bookish merch, candles, journals, stickers, and more. Plus, y'all, it's a bookstore that specializes in romance. I love this whole idea. I love that there are so many now. To celebrate five years of happily ever afters, Love Sweet Arrow is offering Smart Bitches listeners, that's you, 20% off purchases in store and online throughout the month with code SMARTBITCHES. In addition, all orders over $100 will receive a free gift with purchase. Woohoo! Enter code SMARTBITCHES at checkout online or mention it in the store to receive your discount. Code applies only to in-stock products. Free gift will be selected by staff when fulfilling your order. The discount is valid now, so you can start shopping at shop.lovesweetarrow.com. And thank you to Love Sweet Arrow for supporting the show. This episode is sponsored in part by Lumi Deodorant. It's August. It's soup. As in, I live in a bowl of soup. It's not even in a bread bowl. It's just muggy, like 80, 90% humidity. Thankfully, Lumi Deodorant makes it easy for me to feel comfortable and freshly scented. And I have a special offer. New customers get $5 off Lumi's starter pack with code Sarah30 at lumideodorant.com. 
I brought the lavender sage deodorant cream with me on a vacation where we were touring extremely crowded places in very hot weather. And wow, it was so effective. I also used the solid stick deodorant and it's great. The toasted coconut scent is lovely. And I just have to think about it once a day and only once a day. And that is it. How does it work? Well, some products try to mask odor with a fragrance, but Lumi is formulated and powered by mandelic acid to stop odor before it starts. It's like a pre-odorant. Lumi was developed by an OBGYN and it is aluminum and paraben free, skin safe and clinically proven to control odor anywhere for up to 72 hours. Lumi's starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tomb deodorant, two free products of your choice, like a mini body wash and deodorant wipes and free shipping. As a special offer for listeners, new customers get $5 off a Lumi starter pack with code SARAH30 at LumiDeodorant.com. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you visit LumiDeodorant.com and use code SARAH30. Okay, like I said, we do a recap at the start, but here are the characters so you know who to expect in this incredibly awesome recap. Andy and Damien, heard about them. There's also Grimalkin, the talking Siamese cat. There's a magic house where said talking cat can conjure rooms, although to my knowledge, the house doesn't necessarily have a proper name. And there's a dragon bathing pond. I mean, there's a lot going on here. So let's get started on with the podcast. If you listen to the Heaving Bosoms episode on Tuesday, mm -hmm. what is time? I don't know what a time Monday. is. Monday. Monday. Sure, it's just like Tuesday, but it's the day before. The, right, that's fun. Uh -huh. Right, yeah. So Monday, you listen to the episode. We've got Andy, the nurse, mm -hmm. who asks a lot of questions and takes zero shit. We've got None Damien, sharp-suited dragon man, who f who's basically like a border patrol agent to the other world, which is kind of <laughs> icky, but like creatures come over and they want to snack on humans and he and his band of X-Men slash Titans go. Yeah. They stop them. They stop them. And also he um, is, you know, billionaire Bruce Wayne. Yeah, he's Bruce character. Wayne the dragon. Dragon Wayne. Yes. So he's yes. Dragon Wayne. And there's a there's a magical talking Siamese cat who is mm -hmm. obsessed with cheese. And the, the whole setup is Damien Dragon Wayne hired Andy, no bullshit nurse, to look yes. after his buddy Zach, who allegedly fell down the stairs but really got mauled by something with claws and stuff, for mm -hmm. eight hours so he could go fight another superhuman thing that injured mm -hmm. him. So she does manage to keep him alive. And then... Yeah. He's injured and she's like, ooh, I think I'm going to kiss you. So I'm going to do yes. that. Turns out there was a succubus. So she got horny pants for no reason. And he was like, Her okay, pheromones. I'm, she pulls a thorn out of him. He's all better. She, he's like, all right, I can use my forgetting fire, capital F, capital F, mm -hmm. to make you forget. And she's like, <laughs> how about no? And successfully argues with his moral center that she, she he should not do this against her consent. And so she goes out into the world. He pays her for the terrible, terrible evening. That's goes out the in the world and she knows everything. Yeah. And she's like, I don't know. I might be open to seeing you again. Would you be open to seeing me? And he's like, for definitely sure. Yes. Because his dragon's like, why are you letting her out of the car? Mine. Yeah. And this Mine. is one of those cases where, and I always find this very fascinating, is mm -hmm. the animal shifter identity and the human identity one identity. And they know like this is a human, like I have the ability to make dinner. I have the ability mm -hmm. to shift into a bear. Or is it two consciousness? Consciousnesses. And in this one, the dragon has a voice and he has a voice and they bicker all the time. Yeah, they're constantly arguing yeah, with they're each other. very, very fussy. So we begin so, with chapter yeah. 12. Andy is in her apartment and her phone is going nuts. Dun, dun, dun. <gasps> okay, I, this is so terrible, y'all. Andy lives above a Greek bakery. Can you imagine mm -hmm. a more hellish existence on this earth? No. Nope, she lives a above a Greek, a Greek bakery. So her best friend, Yumi, runs the bakery. She's like, I can't come down. I'm yeah. gross. I'm covered in viscera. Yeah. She's basically covered in otherworldly animal goo. And so she can't go to the bakery. And Yumi's like, meet me in the alley right now. And she's like, fine. Yeah. So, so she, she wants to try out a new, um, Yumi wants her to try a new bread. Yes. Yumi is non-binary and their gender yeah. presentation was fluid. But today they oh. had on big Gold hoop earrings, which Andy had learned for them, was femme. And Yumi, Yumi's pissed. Yumi's like, what in the name of hell were you doing getting out of Damien Blackwood III's car? And why did he take you to play paintball? Because she is covered yeah. with blue goo. And he's like, oh, <gasps> yeah, paintball. Perfect. That's exactly Great. it. And Yumi's like, I do not believe you. Yeah. What is happening? 
And Andy distracts her by like, all right, what do you want me to try? And right. you're gonna have to feed it to me. I can't touch things. And he's like, fine. And of course, it's magic. It's pho, but it's bread. How? Magic bread. Wow, Yumi. Yumi is good at their job. Yumi knows what's up. And Yumi, Yumi delivers the most true and prescient line of this entire book. Ooh. Basil transcends all culinary borders. <laughs> Damn true. right. It's a pain it's in the true. ass to keep alive. My God, it's thirsty. It needs water all the time. But basil yeah. does transcend. It does. So yeah, I'm a baking genius. Thank you very much for acknowledging. Now, please explain to me what the hell is going on with you. And Andy's yeah. like, ah, oh, pay patient, patient privacy. Hmm? And she and so Yumi's like, well, no, because you did get out of the car of a billionaire playboy who like could give to homeless shelters and fucking doesn't. Yeah. Like, so what was that about? And, and Andy's like, how did you recognize his car? And Yumi's like, well, I was waiting for the chance to key it. Yep. Damien's family's public face was pretty much gentrification personified. Mm -hmm. Ouch! He really is Border Patrol for the other yes. world. Like, wow, we're going to call him out on many things here. Uh huh. I'm all about calling for billionaire responsibility by side characters. <laughs> this is great. Same, same. Yeah. So, and he's like, would you judge me if I went out with him? And Yumi's like, I mean, if you use your powers for good and get him to donate to some charitable causes, I guess no. You mean, go live your life. There's no reason why have you fun. shouldn't have a little fun. Uh -huh. And, you know, you talk him into donating to the, you know, health, the homeless shelter on well, you know, up the road. That's that's pretty. That would be pretty good. Yeah. And Andy's like, do you want me to be Robin Hood or are you whoring me out? And Yumi says, it's a fine line is all I'm saying. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then Yumi says, and I quote, oh. raising their hands up into prayer, go where the vagina takes you. You yes. only live once. But if your <laughs> vagina takes you into a billionaire's mansion, you should definitely steal some shit. It's not like you know. <laughs> now, first of all, the dragon would absolutely know, but Yumi... Mm -hmm. Yumi is fabulous. I'm sad that we're Yumi's only, great. I'm only I'm sad we're only meeting Yumi halfway through because Yumi is Yumi's tremendous. I know. So a a Andy's laughing. She feels better. And uh Yumi's like, yeah, you're gross. You need to like go go, go shower. Go shower. And Yumi's like, yeah, yeah, go have fun, even if it is with the devil. But he's not a devil. He's a dragon, she thinks to herself. <laughs> So she goes into her house and she sort of like shouts at her Irish roommate. Yeah, and is dodging like, her roommate. I'm going to get in the bye bath time and goes and gets in a shower. Do you think that the, that the blue shimmer tiger viscera is like when you dye your hair and it looks like you're murdering Grimace in the shower? Yes. Right. Yeah. So then you have to like wash the white tub Got before it. it like stains like it's Absolutely. probably a whole process right it has to be it yeah it's like tie-dye mm -hmm. this is not good yeah well and i had a hard time with this because what she does is get into a bath with a metric fuck ton of otherworldly viscera and werewolf blood and then she decides to think about damien and how hot he is and so she scoots all the way down to the end of the tub, puts her legs up and lets the lets the water go into her vagina and masturbates like that. And if there is other fluids in that bathtub, no. I cannot. Hard no. Okay, good. Hard, yeah. Hard, hard, hard no. no. Yeah. I didn't think that these authors would do that to me, but I just needed to make sure. Right. I mean... I, okay. It's kind of like when, you know, 10 years ago, maybe 15 mm. years ago, you're reading a romance and they don't mention, a, and as a contemporary, they don't mention a condom. Right. I would just mentally right. insert, of course, they're practicing safe sex. and Absolutely. And I would notice that it wasn't there, but I would sort of overwrite it in my brain. There's a condom. They're not just going to bone town and having a breathless, I'm about to orgasm. Oh yeah, I'm clean. I swear. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Just, just, just the tip, whatever. Oh my yeah. God. I'm not, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not on board with that, but I always mentally, they are right there using condoms. So mm -hmm. mentally speaking, that, well, that water is very clean. It's pristine. Yes. Crystal clear. Better than water. dragon bathing pond. Oh, for sure. For sure oh my God. Sure. Also pond scum. Yeah. Oh, Ugh. no. <laughs> <laughs> so, then she decides that she is going to text him. 
yeah. because he said that if she texted, he would come running. So she texts him and all she says is 10 p.m. tonight. And then he he doesn't answer for a while. But then he answers back. All he says is yes. Meanwhile, his dragon the whole day has been like, go, 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 but, go get her. Claim her. Where the fuck is she? Made her. Yeah. Here, I'm gonna, we're going to have some sex fantasies about her. Mm-hmm. Andy, dragon. It's like a very obsessive sort of thought. And absolutely. Right. Oh. As he's been battling his dragon all day because his dragon would really like to go to Bone Town, please. And thank you. Then she texts him, 10 <gasps> tonight. But, but I'm so sorry, listener. I did you dirty just now. It is after a whole scene where he's driving a bunch of curvy mountain roads up to his castle and he's driving really, really fast. But because he's thinking about her so much, he has to do a driving masturbation. Yeah. And so he's he either spins, rubbing himself through his pants. The scar, the, the car <laughs> spins in a circle because he slams on the brake and spins in a circle because as when he comes <laughs> in his own pants. Yes, in his pants, because he he says he's driving the road by memory as he just furiously masturbates through his what pants. he's driving? <laughs> My guy. And he ignores the warm, wet spots spreading against his stomach. Like, oh, oh dude. Oh, my God. Mm. Come on. You're, you've got a whole castle to do that in. Pick my, a fucking room. My God, you're almost there. Hold it. Yeah. Grimalkin will create a masturbation room for you. Right? If you need him to. I'm sure the pond water does things. Absolutely. Swish, like, what swish, else swish. is an interdimensional guardian going to do for you? Right? Already in Other charge of the you... back. Changed out all the air when it was succubus farts. That's what I'm saying. So, yeah, he just he just ejaculates in his pants. The car spins <laughs> around and then she texts him, hey, you want to see me? And he's like, absolutely. In fact, yes, I do. I do. <laughs> I will, however, take a shower first. Yeah, um, oh, yes. my God. So then she goes back to. So she like goes out and starts talking to her roommate, Sammy. Yeah. Who is Irish. She met her because uh, Sammy was dating her delinquent brother, and Danny. she says the the best thing that ever happened to Danny was dating Sammy. And the best thing that ever happened to Sammy was dumping Danny. Oh. <laughs> and now they're roommates. But Andy and Sammy seem to get on very, very well. Mm-hmm. And Sammy's worried that the thing that has kept Andy out all night was was her brother, was, was Danny. Yeah. Said, is he... Is, is is this a is problem? He pulling within? shenanigans. Yeah, he's bad news. Don't make me call the cops. And and Andy's Ooh. like, oh my god, because Sammy would never call the cops. Mm-mm. No, because she's also a criminal. Yeah, she also does crime. Yeah, used to going straight now. Yep. And then all of a sudden, there's like a knock, knock, knock at the door, mm-hmm. and a very leggy businesswoman yep. walks in in sky high stilettos. Yes, and she's like. I work for your uncle. He is in town and you will see him tonight for dinner. She has a tiger claw on the end of a leather thong tucked against her cleavage. What was that about? So we got more listener, shimmery tigers. I don't know. I think it might be something else because mm-hmm. um, listener, this is the first book in a four book saga. Yes. I did a whoopsie. I didn't know it wasn't an HEA at the end of this book. It's fine. And in the descriptions of the later books, she talks about finding out about family secrets. Yeah. That, you know. Yeah. Auntie Kim knows a lot about dragons for no fucking reason. That's is right. what I'm saying. So her uncle Lee has recently returned to town and desires to have dinner with you this evening. And Andy's like, I work the night shift. And she's like, so? This woman is just <laughs> like, I don't care. And mm-hmm. I, sh- I don't go out in the evenings. Miss, yeah. and apparently this woman's name is Elsa. So now I have that image yeah, in my head. That's that's never going. Well, away. I'm sorry, Elsa, that he sent you, but we have to reschedule. And Elsa's like, it'll be a light dinner. You'll be done before your shift starts. Uh-huh. And she says, no. And, and the Elsa's woman, like, the woman uh-huh. responds, yes. Yeah, you have to. What? And she's like, listen, I know my uncle. I'm sure he told you that like the sky would fall if we didn't get together and you would be fired. But he he absolutely exaggerated and like you're going to be fine uh, we just have to reschedule 
yeah. next weekend, promise, cross my heart, hope to die. And Elsa's like, she like furiously texts. And then she's like, okay, all right, that'll 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 work. We'll get together next weekend. Uh-huh. And she says, dress appropriately for the occasion. What's the occasion, ding dong? Yeah. And like, okay, uh, mm, I'll talk about it later. So then and Andy's like, I'm going to wear fuzzy pajamas with feet. Yeah. Kiss yes. my ass. Yes. But then, ding dong, somebody else is there, and there's a package now. And uh, she opens the package, and it is a slinky, sexy dress. Um, Cut on the bias, it says. Yes. So what that means is, so fabric has a, a war and a weft. It has a weave. Uh-huh. A, to cut a fabric on the bias means you're cutting it in an angle so that Diagonally. instead of being up and down and left and right, it's on an X. And what the bias does is, A, it's stretchy. Like if you have a mm-hmm. piece of fabric and you stretch it on the diagonal, it will stretch. But it's also more fluid and very, very, very um, liquidy in its movement. Yeah. yeah. Bias is yeah. stretchy. And depending on the fabric, that's some sexy fabric movement. Yeah. And... And it's, yeah, it's interesting because she says that they cut it on the bias so that one leg is showing more than the other. Yeah. Got to slit up the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's like, oh, Damien really wants me to go fancy pants tonight. Cool, cool. And she gets all ready. She's ready to go. Sammy's like, ah, wooga. Like, what are you doing tonight? <laughs> what is happening? Yeah. She's like, no worries. Don't even worry about it. And when Damien gets there, he's like, oh, my God, you look absolutely incredible. And he's in, like, jeans. <laughs> and so she's like, ah. Um, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's- wait, I thought you sent me this dress? And he's like, no, I super did not. But, wow, I would love for you to keep it on. And she's like, oh, my God, I totally misread the situation. He's like, no, keep it on. And then she realizes that the dress is from her uncle's assistant. Why are you getting a sex dress to, go to be a gift to, from an uncle? To, for your uncle. Like, what's that about? Why are we like and that? And how did it appear so instantly? Either did she magic it mm. into being or did he just mm. presume that the answer would have to be yes. And so here's your dress. Yeah. And she's just going to hold on to it. Yeah. Either way, she puts on the hot, sexy dress for Mr. Dragon and the dragon's like, oh, yeah. Okay. And the uncle's going to be pissed because their listener, spoiler alert, they're going to ruin this dress. Yeah, this dress is not long for this world. No. (laughs) So they go to a restaurant. They go to a restaurant. Yep. It's the fanciest one in town. Maybe on the continent. Yeah. You never know. And he has a private room in the back? Or does he close it down? Well, he... They're in the car. Here's an interesting... Here's an interesting piece of information. She looks at the coin again. And she goes, what is that? And he goes, careful. And she's like, okay, I am a nurse. And even I'm not entirely sure what you're talking about here. It's a touch piece, a thing that kings who serve by divine right in the Middle Ages gave gave to people with horrible diseases. The idea was that if the king touched it and the coin would touch you, that you would be healed. Mm -hmm. And she's like, wait, you're a king? And he says, completely straight face, no, not anymore. Oh. It was from a friend who died. And so she focuses on that part. But he's just like, oh, wait a minute. It's uh-huh. not a king anymore. Okay. So they get to the restaurant. Apparently the building used to be a bank. And mm-hmm. they get a very private room set for two. In the vault. In the vault of the bank. That's sexy. Yeah. Pretty, pretty hot. Although hard to get out of. Sure. Yeah, no, sexy, but it's a danger sex, you know? Yeah, it's it's danger sex. Yeah. And so he says, oh, I know ordering for you is patriarchal bullshit. So I figure I'll oh. order one of everything you can pick and choose and we could be private. And the waiter drops a bottle of wine and leaves. And she's like, you do realize that this is ridiculous. He's like, yes, yeah. have dinner, eat up. So she tried everything. There's pasta, there's steak, there's wine, there's crab. There's so much food. And then she realizes that Damien is only eating steak and it's just past raw. Yeah. It's basically seared. Yeah. She's like, so um, when you're eating, are you eating for two? <laughs> and he says, is that really the first thing you're asking me? And she said, well, runner up was going to be if you hatched from an egg. And then he starts to <laughs> laugh. 
He said, I had a mother if I was hatched. I don't remember it. And yeah, it was the first (laughs) time he'd ever really laughed in front of her. Um, And he's like, all right, so your turn. How long have you been a nurse? And she says, well, I know you did a background check. Don't you already know? Yeah. He's like, I'm trying to seem less intimidating. She's like, all right, four years. And they're, you know, they're talking and they're talking and having a perfectly excellent conversation. Like this is good dialogue. Yeah. They're very honest and very funny. Uh huh. That's very, very good doc, like very, very good dialogue. Mm-hmm. And meanwhile, he's try- she's trying to ask questions and find out what's going on. So we get a little bit more information about realms, which he does by putting like all the different plates on the on the table and it's like there's a realm over here there's a realm over there and most realms are useless except for travel but some contain other forms of life and the gates come through and people from other realms or creatures from other realms come through and it's bad Mm -hmm. basically like we said he's interdimensional paranormal border control (laughs) and he's still asking himself like how much is it safe to tell her like my guy you've told her all the things yeah like, what is the deal? Like, you've already, you've, the, the, the horse has left the barn. It oh. has left the estate. It is in the, the next county. The horse is county. never going to be seen again. Yeah, like, you've, you've told, you've, 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 you've told her all of the things. And his dragon's like, yeah, but she still smells good. Yeah. So they're basically getting to know each other while also revealing backstory and lore. Very well handled. Uh-huh. This came out of nowhere for me, but it was also perfect. Yeah. So basically, I think she says something snarky about him being dangerous or something. Yeah. And so he flips the fucking table out of nowhere. Yeah. And then he basically like like Mick Jagger, Harry Styles slides over to her on his knees. Yep. And and he he's he's got his hands like up on her thighs under her dress. And he says, How dangerous am I now? Like on the scale, how dangerous is this? And she says, oh, I'd say it's about a two. And then he goes down on her. He makes her come and and she's like, what are you doing? And he says, I'm big. I want to make sure you're ready. Jesus Christ. Holy what? Yeah. It's very intense. It's It's very intense. He's genuinely worried about his girthiness. And he says, I'm also, big, I want you ready. And he's just going downtown. But, and, and this is right after he has destroyed a metric fuck ton of property. Yeah, dishes everywhere. It is not his. Broken cutlery, broken broken flatware, like or j- broken plates. Like, food, I bet it smells real weird. There's food oh everywhere. And he's like, no. There's mollusks all over the floor. No, I must go spelunking in her cavern. Like, <gasps> yep. And so he he gets up to three fingers, oh, yeah. you know, because he's got to make it happen. She comes like a freight train. Yeah. And then he says, well, if that was a two, do you want to see like a seven? And she's like, yes, I absolutely do. Yep. So he picks her up, puts her against the wall. Yeah. And then they bone their hearts out. Against the wall. Now. Against the wall. They 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 do the thing that I just said I hate, where they are okay. he, they are like pressed up against each other, right about to do the do, and she says, oh, "There's yeah. no way anything bad can come of this, right? No eggs or STDs." And he, he says, "No, crossbreeding requires magical effort, and magic cures all ailments. I do have a condom if it would make you more comfortable." And she says, "No, but I'm on the pill." And he goes, "What's the uh-huh. butt about?" And she said, "Well, I've never had sex." with a guy without a condom before. I'm like, okay, uh-huh. so there's your pseudo virginity. Check. Yep. Pseudo virginity. And she's like, it's okay if you're sure about the other things. Are you sure you're sure? And she goes, wait, you're not mm-hmm. a virgin, are you? And he's like, no. Did you have to ask? And she goes, well, you know, different people count different things, which okay for the open-mindedness. But again, I don't like having the, hey, I'm clean. I'm on the pill. Let's go. Yeah. You know, just as you're about to go through the go through the goalposts, it's kind of stressed. It always stresses me out. It stresses me out. And she yeah. goes, well, I'm a virgin when it comes to fucking a dragon. And he goes, not for long. And then we've had the awkwardly odd conversation. And then uh-huh. it's time to go to Bone Town. Wow. And they do a great job. Yeah, everybody. There's, there's his cock is throbbing. It's really big. And yeah. 
he's like, I want you, I want you. And yep. He's in. He's I think there's in, a thumb on a clit, maybe. Yep. He he's like telling her what he wants to do. And in his head, his dragon is like to claim you. And he's like, Yeah, let's not talk about that right now. Yeah. And, and he's thinking about tying her up. Oh and yeah. He's he's thinking about all the on things. him. Yeah. On her. Yeah. It's wowza. Wowza. Mm-hmm. And then so he has this transcendent experience. Yeah. And he kind of goes on a little trip. Yeah. In his mind. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so weird because then he's like, oh, no, I have to push her away. Yeah. The only thing that's safe is for me to push her away. Right. So she says that it seems like his whole, you know, personality changes. Yeah. And he pulls out a hundred dollar bill and he gives it to her. And he says, for your trouble, and she, or something like that. And she's like, wait, wait, are you paying me for the sex we had? Yeah, he's, and he's showing like, her his appreciation and puts the money <gasps> under the strap of her dress. <gasps> and it is, okay, entirely out of nowhere. Like, none of this makes sense. None of no. this scene makes sense at all. All like it. It doesn't make sense for any of the things that he said or done up till now. No. It's very weird. Yeah, and like it, I understand plot wise what's trying to happen here is trying yeah. to introduce tension, trying to introduce stakes. He now has something he has to make up for. They can't just the boning cannot end all tension between them, but this boning right. has ended a substantial amount. So there's immediate introduction of new tension, but this tension is shitty tension, and I don't like it. I didn't like it at all. No, I'm I was not a like, fan. wow. Like, Absolutely how do you not. ever come back from that? Like my, and that's not to like shame sex work. No. It's just he meant it as a as a deliberately demeaning thing to yeah, do to sort was, of put her in her place. And trying to put distance between them. And they've already talked about how she is aware of the wealth disparity and that people yes. like him buy people like her. And oh, she's God. already worked for him one night to take care of this uh-huh. page. Like there's all these pa- power and financial differentials between them. Mm-hmm. And he just jumps right in and adds one Boy. more. So she throws a carafe of water in his face. Bless her yeah. heart. Good for her. And I love her because she's like, he saw it coming and he let me do it. And that was smart of him. Yep. <laughs> Basically. That's right. Oh, but then her her cell phone goes off and she gets a robocall from the hospital because shit's going down. It is an all hands on deck call. It's a robocall saying you must report to work right now. Yeah. And Meanwhile, she- he gets a mysterious call that is like shit's going down. They oh. find out that they're both being called to the hospital. Right. So and- he's like, I'm taking you home or I'll get you a cab. And she's like, just take me to the fucking hospital. He's like, no, I'm going to get you a cab. And she's like, I'll just tell it to go to the fucking hospital. So So drive me to the hospital. I've got scrubs. I always bring my badge. Let's go. And also like, they're offering double time and you know how important money is to me. Yeah, you you already know why this is important. Like what the shit. So he's on the drive over. He's like, she's so small. Like she's sort of collapsed in on herself. Yeah, because you crushed her heart, you ass fuck. You were mean to her. On purpose. Yeah. And, oh, man. And he, like, feels really bad. And he starts thinking about how he's never had any compunctions about the forgetting fire or distancing himself from other people. And he doesn't know what's going on. And they get to the hospital. And he's like, stay in the car. Fuck off. And I love I love this and I love her because she's like, you're an outsider and these people cannot be bribed like they like the security at a hospital. They don't want to lose their jobs. So like I have a key card. I am an employee there. Either you're coming with me or you're not getting in. Yeah, they're not just going to let you in no matter how much money you throw at them. Yeah. (sighs) So he follows her in. And she finds out that, like, Ish is going down in the ICU. Yeah. So she goes to get on the elevator, and he's like, no, you have to stop. You can't go. I can't let you go into danger. Oh, for God's sake, you. And she's like. Butt munch. Yeah, this is my fucking job. What are you talking about? This is this is a normal Tuesday for me. Yeah. Thank you. She's like, you're in danger. And she's like, yeah, that happens. 
So yeah, yeah, I'm fine. You're not my employer. You're not my family. You're barely a friend. (gasps) You're just some brand new fuck buddy who has no say in what I do. (gasps) This is a hospital where I'm a nurse and people actually need me. So I'm going to work. And like gives him the greatest of all fucks off. Fuck off, asshole. It's great. It's so great. But he is overcome because he will not hear her say that he is just some brand new fuck buddy in a line of fuck buddies. He means more than that. Yeah. So he picks her up. His fifis were hurt. Yes. (laughs) He picks her up and he puts her against another wall in that elevator and he makes out with her face real hard (laughs) to prove a point. Yeah. And she's rightly being like, these are a lot of mixed signals. You twat. (laughs) Yes. Why are you like this? And then they go upstairs together, right? Yeah. We have sexual tension and now we must go to go to go to work. Yes. So the elevator opens and there's just screaming. Like pandemonium. Pandemonium. So they both run towards it. And he notices like, oh, wait, having this person by my side when I'm doing my job is kind of great. And I'm sure she would be like, "Uh, our jobs are very different, sir. And Mm -hmm. I'm going into my job. You just happen to be here. Mm -hmm. And he's mad that she called him a fuck buddy. But, you know, whatever. It it happened. And he's like, where is the safest place? He's like, I'm going to take you there. And she's like, would you stop? God almighty. Yeah. You do your job. I'll do mine. And his dragon is now super mad because there's... Uh, a sound of a lurker, this sort of subsonic frequency that he can hear and he mm-hmm. knows that it is coming from the direction that Andy had just run to. And so his dragon is like, let me out. It's time to yeah. do some breaking of stuff. And he's like, I uh, have to protect her. No, we're in a hospital. She's mine. And yeah. she runs into the room where he knows the lurker is. Yeah. And so he runs because in after her. the lurker is a big one. Because- it's very large. It has it has been eaten. Yes. <laughs> and it has been eaten poor Jessica. Yeah, it ate it, it ate a nurse. Oof. Yeah. Oof, Jessica. So Not great. a bunch of her colleagues are all around trying to save Jessica. Meanwhile, he's like, I guess I'm gonna try to, you know, take care of the danger. Yeah. So he distracts it into another room and they're circling each other like, like weird ass cowboys, I think yeah. she says. Yeah. And then, you know, they fight. And she's on top of Jessica trying to do blood stuff and CPR stuff. Yeah, they're really trying to save her. And she asks, what happened? And Matt is like, good fucking question. And Sheila goes, giant blue thing, some kind of a demon playing with the cross (laughs) around her neck. Okay, rhythm check. Mm -hmm. Like, they're just Mm -hmm. like, yeah, you know, weird shit went down in the hospital per usual. They tap out one person doing CPR and they put in another. Like, they're all working Mm -hmm. as a team. We'll be like, yeah, you know, demon. Okay, moving on. Yeah. And she knows that whatever did this is now fighting Damien. Right. And the thing comes back in the room and they are still trying to save Jessica. They are giving CPR. They're giving her epinephrine. Like they are trying and they're like, and a blue monster. And she wants to go get more blood, but that would involve her leaving the room and going down the back stairs. Yeah. And everybody's like, you are not leaving this room. Like there is just one door between us and that thing. And that thing. She's like, I'm going to take the stairs. You cannot. I know where to go. And she's like, nope, I'm going. And Mm -hmm. the monster leaps onto the glass in front of her. And then she sees Damien wrapping his arms around this monster and pulling it off the glass. And And then it disappears into the hallway. Yeah. And then it does reappear without a leg. As it does, you know. (laughs) And then she hears the crash cart behind her singing a single note that indicates that just as the monster is dead, so is Jessica. Yeah, there's no reason for her to go down the back stairs. Yeah. And Matt is like, who the fuck is that? And Sheila says, I'm calling it. Jessica, Jessica's dead. And then she's like, fuck it. And she walks out the room and no one is going to stop her. No. She's like, are you all right? And she looks at him. Are you all right? Are you? He's like, yes, no, maybe. Come with me. And she says, don't worry about me. This is just my usual Saturday night. And and sadly, it's kind of her Saturday night too. They go into the ICU and there's Austin and Zach and there's more blood. And 
it's red. And Damien's like, what Austin's happened? a meat fact. I'm sorry. Zach is a meat factory. Yeah. Right now. He's like, there are hunters here. How is he alive? And she dials up his medication. And if something is wrong with Zach, something's very, very wrong because he yeah. gave birth to yet another monstrosity. <laughs> so it's like that scene in Aliens where the thing comes out of his chest. Only this time, more and more animals or animals or creatures are bursting out of Zach. And that really can't be good for your overall, you know, stability. Yeah. That, that can't yeah. be good for your blood pressure. No. And so he's like, how is there a portal inside Zach? And she goes, oh, wait, I did I see a I shimmer disc. I think I saw it. I think I saw it. I think I know where it is. Yeah. And so he's like, okay. And she goes to she goes to touch him. And, and he's like, you're covered in silver. You cannot touch him. Yeah. But give me your bracelet. Because I'll be able to basically cauterize as I operate into yeah. him. He takes her bracelet and he thing. straightens it out and makes it a blade. And Damien tells Austin, get back. And Austin is like, no, we're almost there. And Damien's like, there is a thing inside him and it yeah. needs to come out now. So he's going to... And Austin says, you have two minutes. Yeah, you have two minutes. And so... <laughs> Andy turns up all of the dials, all of the medication. We're getting all oh, the yeah. drugs in this guy and specifically <laughs> mentions that there's fentanyl. She cranks mm -hmm. it all the way up, which if that is not an mm -hmm. indication as to the superhuman power of a werewolf, For I don't sure. know what is. By the way, folks, yeah. in many localities at this time, your insurance will cover access to naloxone. I'm not sure if I'm saying that mm -hmm. right, but insurance will cover giving it to you and then you can get trained on how to use it and be part of the safety net for your community because fentanyl is everywhere. It sucks and it's horrible. So oh. if you feel like being part of the face safety net of your community, you can get trained on how to help people who are in fentanyl overdose. But that doesn't matter if you're a werewolf. No. Because she's just no, cranking no it all the way up to 11 because they got to go in for the Mylar portal smudge thing. That's the one. It's stuck yeah. in his body. Yep. And so he's about to go into uh, Zach and she's like, hold on. Do wait. you know what you're doing? And he's Have like, you ever done surgery before like i haven't either but at least i know i know a what lot to do what like, i know what there. i'm looking at and austin yeah. meanwhile is like <sighs> yeah big mad because he is very worried about his brother and he's starting to freak out and that's and there's like 90 seconds left now yeah 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 and she's like this is my job i've had way more experience at looking at the insides of people than you just trust me so she takes the the knife she takes off all of her silver rings mm -hmm. she takes the knife and she cut tissues. She keeps his bowel in place. Good going, girl. Nice I work. don't necessarily believe that a nurse would be like, sure, surgery. I will avoid bowel sectioning. I don't know that you would do that. But Damien pulls, you know, his intestines out and they just gut him like a Halloween pumpkin. And yeah. Austin is heavy breathing on their necks. And she's just looking for whatever this, whatever she saw, she's looking for it. And Austin's like, it's a full moon. You need to step away. Because he's going to shift, but they're like, he can't shift with this demon portal inside him. That's just, no, because then they're just going to have to open him up again. Yeah, and that's, later, and he's not really going to want that to happen as a werewolf, right? Mm -hmm. So he's she's torn an artery. His body is starting to fill up with blood. She's like, "Oh fuck!" And then she sees it, and Damien goes, "I got it!" and lifts something the size of a half dollar out, and then rips it to shreds. But like, which and then seems, they're like, that seems really easy to get rid of a portal to another dimension. But apparently it's just like ripping a piece of wrapping paper. It's done. And then I'm Austin's, wondering if this is like a different kind of portal. Maybe that, it's like, like a piece of one, but not a whole. in him. Yeah. Or it's a part of one's. But it was big yeah. enough to like, let creatures come out of his abdomen a couple times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Zach, quote, looks like half of an all-you-can-eat cannibal buffet. And Austin's wristwatch starts going off. And she looks at and Austin. Damien pulls her back and she's like, no, I have to help. There's an artery. There's an arterial He's bleeding. Bleed. He's bleeding. And his his guts are on his abdomen. Like it's like mid C-section over here. We got to. Yes. He's birthed a portal and we need to put him all back. Yes. And, and she's like, nope, nope. She's like, we can't leave him like that. And he's like, nope, don't look. And she's like, why? Yeah, don't look. And then she starts hearing squelching. Oh, yeah. It's super gross. And breaking a of snaps, snaps of breaking bones. And a wet slurping that had no place <gasps> in a hospital. Like I, <laughs> okay, I recognize there are a lot of ways for shifters to shift in romance. There's yeah. lots of ways. Like 
I yeah. know with with Nalini Singh series, there's sort of like a shimmer it's, and it's yep. painless and it's beautiful and it doesn't hurt. And then for other mm. shifters, it's very painful and there's bones and stuff. I didn't need to know about slurping. <laughs> I would have been fine not adding that to my imagination. I here. think it was just because he wasn't a half of an all you can eat cannibal buffet at the time. So what, like I don't know that like there would have been slurping. slurping it all back in. Yes, if, if, his intest- yes. if his intestines hadn't been decorating the room. Okay, exactly. Okay, so slurping, baby, just zzzz, all special back occasion. Inside. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is pretty amazing because you know the the peritoneum, like the body part that holds all uh-huh. your organisms, is very it's very tight. Like it's very it very tense. And when you, when you, <laughs> I had a C section. When you cut through it, that's also where your nausea sensors are. So when they cut oh, it and when they sew no. it is when you're most likely to be like, I'm gonna hurl, which Oh I my did. God. Yes, yeah, so that's where all your nausea sensor a lot of them are, is in the, yeah, the yeah, yeah. this peritoneum, which is like I think what holds your holds your but not the perineum, that's different. Peritoneum no, no, holds no, the all your organs in. different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, can you imagine? Like, not only does it slurp all the way back in, but it seals up like a Tupperware. Like <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So, yep, so it's over. She turns, her, she turns yeah. around and there's two motherfuckingly huge wolves panting behind her. Motherfuckingly huge was hilarious. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. It's just, it's just, it's so good. <laughs> motherfuckingly <laughs> huge. Like, I would use that in my daily lexicon. And I yes. think I will. <laughs> Yeah. So Austin is a giant fucking wolf the size of a couch. One is sort of rust and blonde and the other is black and white and gray. And Damien just walks up to Zach and is like, I don't know what you did to yourself. I'm glad to see you back in one piece. Uh, but we'll talk later. Yeah, that's the lady that saved you. When yes. you can talk. Yeah. And so then she's like, okay, so they're werewolves. So they're werewolves. Oh, okay. And he's like, yeah. And then she goes to pet him on the snoot again. Yeah. You she's know, like, I'll just, just pet him on the snoot. And Damien's, Damien's like, not having it. Uh, Andy, Zach, Zach, Andy. And she goes, hi, puppy. <laughs> hi, puppy. <laughs> And Austin pet is pissed about werewolves. This. He's like super mad. Like, you do not pet them. She's like, what? Why not? She's like, because they're monsters. And Zach is like, I'm super cute. Like, he lets his tongue roll out and he goes down he on starts, all fours and he rolls around and he starts scoogeeing towards her. His like, tail's you wagging. Me, you can pet me. And Austin is just utterly disgusted. Like, I'm oh, embarrassed. Like, I'm just what the fuck, embarrassed. Man. And, and then at some point, uh, he's like, also, that's a grown man. Yeah. Like, it, like that's another reason. Maybe. They're also men. Just because they're <laughs> fuzzy. Don't let them fool you. And she's like, yeah, but was it entirely OK for me to have my hand in his guts when he was a man a few minutes ago? But now I can't pet him. And Davey's just like, just, just, just don't. Don't what? He's like, I just, she, I need to think and I'm tired of words. And she's like, OK, I'm gonna go. fair enough. And so she pets the werewolf. Yep, but he's and really like, pissed that he's petting I his best it. friend. <laughs> really pissed. And Zach is like, this is great. She's rubbing my ears. Mm-hmm. Like, she's rubbing my ears. This is fabulous. Nothing is wrong. Zach's been through a lot. Yeah, and like, he had demons coming out of his belly, and now a woman's rubbing <laughs> his ears and booping his snoot. Things are fine. Yeah, yeah. So then they call um, uh, Max. Goggle Man. Yeah. Max. Max. Because he's going to bring the forgetting fire. Yeah, through because, the hospital because they just gotta they gotta let all these people be not thinking about demons. Yeah, so he does it lantern style. Yeah, he's like the oh, crypt keeper of yeah. of memories, yeah. and he comes in and he asks, like, "Are we opening it in front of this bitch?" And what about he's this like, one? No, we're gonna we're gonna leave her be. She gets to remember everything. So she figures out what's going on, and then. They go into um, a break room. Yeah. Because he's like, all of your coworkers are in there sleeping. Yeah. They're all and sleeping. They're, oh, and they have they have spheres on. So yeah. people can only see what they want to see. Right. And so she's like, well, will they see me open the door? And he's like, they'll only see darkness if what they want to see is darkness. And she's like, God damn it. That makes no sense. All right. Fine. Fine. They go in there. And then she's like, wow, they're just, they're just all like everything's normal. Yeah. And he's like, yeah. And she goes, oh, does that mean Jessica's back? That's great. No. No. You can't bring her back. 
And this also sort of grounds it in our reality because she's just a missing person. Yeah, forever. she was here. People will remember. And he says, yes, they'll find her car. And I assume they'll track your badges so they'll know she got in, but they won't have any record of her dying or any memory of her working here tonight. Uh, most human minds can't handle when you die for unearthly reasons. And she's like, there are, there are cameras. Mm -hmm. And also she had kids for fuck's yeah. sake. Yeah. And he's like, well, the forgetting fire will have gotten to them, too. And in a week, it'll be another unsolved mystery. And I got to say, I'm super not OK with that. I hate it. I hate it a lot. I hate it. And and like he knows it's fucked. Yeah. He's like, death is death and I can't change it. And he goes, for what it's worth, I'm sorry. Yeah. He's like, are you all right? She's like, no. I'm super not all right. But I'm really good at compartmentalizing. So I got three or four hours before this sinks in and I lose my shit. He goes, OK, let's we'll so take you cute. home. It's so oh true. It's so yeah. true. And I have to say, I appreciate that in a world like this, death has repercussions. Yeah. And I don't like the solution for Jessica. I think mm. it's fucked. Mm -hmm. But also, Michael's death still weighs on him. And I'm really convinced that she was wearing his fur earlier. Like, I'm really convinced <laughs> that that's what that was. Because it has sentimental value. I'm convinced oh that's God. what that was. Oh yeah, God. Which, why would you keep that? And make it a <laughs> coat, like, for God's sake. But, mm. you know, his death clearly affects Damien and mm. and Andy is like really trying to reconcile what they've done. And for the book, this is as kind a solution to anyone who would be harmed by Jessica's death as they can give. Because to be like, yeah. your, your mom was killed by a demon and sorry is yeah. could be worse than well, we don't know what happened to her. We don't know what happened to her. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, or like. Do you stage a a bear attack of some sort? Right? Like, how do you how do you do handle this? That? And they've just made everyone forget. Like, this is ethically mm -hmm. this is this is ethically a lot for me to, to to ponder. Like, this is part of the this is the part of the book that I was thinking about the most after I finished uh -huh. it. Like, that's mm -hmm. a really weird solution. But okay, all right. Yep. Fair okay. enough. Here we go. So yeah, he's like, all right. Well, if you're going to lose your shit, let's go home. Oh, my God. Yeah. And she says, well, I guess that's why, you know, I get it. But that's why you push people away. This is your life. This is a normal thing for you. And I'm like devastated. And he's and like, do you really understand me? So he pulls over an underpass and there's cars going by, but it's completely dark and it's just the uh -huh. two of them. And she says that she's thinking to herself that the only doctor she'd ever trusted had told her a wise thing. That every person who practices war or medicine has a little graveyard somewhere inside them that they visit oh. full of all the ghosts of their what ifs. Oh. And she visited the one inside her from time to time. And she had the feeling that Damien was trapped in his. And he'd placed Oof. himself and locked himself in there on purpose. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, people around me don't tend to live very long lives. And I never should have picked you up. I never should have. I should have left you there. And she's, but he says, but I have a habit of playing with fire because he's a dragon. That's uh, the one. And she's and the one that comes with the territory, right? And he goes, yeah, I walked into that one, didn't I? <laughs> so even when they're having these really heavy, emotional, poignant conversations, they also tease each other, which mm -hmm. I appreciate. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, you know, you did save me. And he says, I should let you go. And she says, then do it. But that's not what happens. Oh, no. No. Absolutely not. No, he, he he pulls her on top of him uh -huh. and locks puts his the hands seat back. Puts the seat back. Now, I yeah. I understand the concept that they are just so horny pants for each other. They need to do it right now Have in, to. in the car. Yeah. And I understand he drives a big a big car. But I just cannot understand how this is going to be satisfying. It is uncomfortable. No, there's an emergency brake. There's a steering wheel. There's gear shifts. There's like, it's, it, it's just. They don't even open a door for no. her to like get some purchase on top. No, like he just tilts the seat back and puts her coat on the steering wheel and puts his seat all the way down. And like, she's on top of him. And this is how they're going to go to Bone Town. They got to do it. They got to do it. Yeah. I mean, in the car. Yeah, yeah. And so she, listen, she did have that sex with him earlier. Yeah. And so she can take him just right away. Yeah, she's she's all limber, limbered That's up. That's the one. Down there. Yeah. Yeah, she's, yeah. Uh, 
She's able to accommodate his dragon girthiness. <laughs> and, you know, they go to Bone Town. She's yeah. she's on top of him and he's all into it. And the thing I like about the sex scenes here is yeah. that he's very attentive to making sure that she gets off. Yep. But it's kind of a struggle. Like, this is not easy for him. He is very into her. And it. Mm-hmm. I like that better than the... Oh, yeah, sex. I do it all the time. It's no big deal. Get you off. Get you off. Okay, my turn. Like, he's really yeah. struggling with not coming because he really wants her to ex- orgasm first, which I yeah, appreciate. Yeah, and I, I love this scene in particular because he looks at her and he says, show me how to yes, make you come. I was just getting to that. He's so yeah. show me what, what he says. There's no room here for me to eat you out again. <laughs> well, I mean, at yeah. least they're acknowledging the physical limitations of the car space. Yeah. 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 So she she shows him. This is how mm-hmm. this is how I get off. And he goes, OK, that is delightful. I am here for this. This is all good. And he starts mm-hmm. to sort of, you know, improvise. And she comes and it's fire and orbs and explosion and an impossibly totally. tight clench. And she collapses above him like a burnt out star. <gasps> Damn. How dare you. OK. How dare you, you beautiful genius authors. Yeah, damn. Gosh. And he's sort of in awe of how how she how how hard she had orgasm. Like, yeah. He she was very impressed. And <laughs> so then she's like, what about what you? What about you? He goes, "Oh, don't worry about me." And she's like, "No, no, no. You cannot tell me not not to worry. I'm a nurse, literally my job." And he's like, I don't want to lose control of myself because when we were up against the wall in the restaurant, I had left like a crater in the wall from coming and I'm afraid of losing control and hurting you. And his dragon's like, no, 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 it's fine. Keep going. And he's like, it's not safe. And the dragon's like, no, 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 really. It's okay. And he's like, no, it's not safe. You could hurt her. And the dragon was like, oh. I would never hurt her. You would never hurt your mate. Uh-huh. Record scratch. She's not my maid. And he goes, you can't tell. You can't smell it. Right. And he realizes. Like, think back. He thinks back. He had noticed her smell, but had attributed it to the fact that she lived above a bakery. Mm-hmm. And I really appreciate the, the very, very specific attention to detail. Yeah. Like she smells like vanilla. And it's not just like she just randomly smells like Bath and Body Works. She smells like vanilla and cinnamon because and she apples lives in apples. Yeah. Because she lives above a bakery. That makes sense. No, it's actually because, you know, the caramel and the apples in the ocean, that's because she is his mate and his dragon. She's the tastiest treat to him. Nom, nom, nom. Mm-hmm. Yep. And his dragon's like, don't you know? And and the dragon forces him to remember this, you know, this dual consciousness. You had your chest tightened when you first saw her. Yeah. You were so like full of approval of how she handled Austin and that he felt safe leaving Zach with her. Yeah. And even when she had been like, you know, elbow deep in Zach's guts, he had trusted her and he hadn't been able to steal her memories of him. She's like, yeah. well... He thinks to himself, well, fuck, but we cannot tell her. You have to promise ever tell me. her. And the dragon's like, uh, listen, <laughs> um, human business is yours. It's not mine. But we the both. The dragon says like, he says, you have the human words. Yeah. Is, I don't have those. <laughs> I don't have those. But we both share this body. Mm-hmm. So it's very interesting. Like I could really go for a psychological examination of shifter brains. Is it yeah. one consciousness? Is it two? Are they working together? Are they in harmony? Are they at odds? Do they have to fight? Is there a point of acceptance? Like, what is mm-hmm. the inner psychological ba- battle and the manifestation of shifter brains? Like, I could really go for a, an analysis of that because that is not my That'd house of really wheels, cool. but it's kind of cool, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And so she's like, she's she's going for his 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 bait and tackle. Like, she's like, you need to yeah, get off. Yeah, she's going to do a handy on him. Yeah, and he's... She's like, we, we can stop if you want. And he says, you make things harder for me. She goes, I don't think you've got any problems with that. In the hard department. Yeah. So she he picks her up and puts her back in her seat. And then he pushes off his jeans, kicks off his shoes and goes over to her side of the car. <gasps> so there's like, you know, they're both seats are getting action here. Yeah. You have to watch and his this car, my guy. 
his huge 6'3 form has no problem getting over that. Gear shift and the emergency yeah. brake and the center. Because, you know, the, the more... center console. Right. And and you ever notice that the more new a car, the more cubbies it has? Yes. There's so, so many, many places to lose a Cheerio and a French fry in a car now. <laughs> yeah. Like, you open it up and be like, oh, yeah, there's a Cheerio, French fry, and a napkin. Like, uh-huh. there's so many cubbies. He just vaults over all the cubbies. It's fine. No problem. Boy, yo, 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 yo. And he just sinks right into her. Uh-huh. And he's like, "All right, let's let's go. Let's test this out. Let's yeah, like go. I'm not gonna hurt her, so like I'm gonna I'm gonna fuck her the way that I need to." Right. And he, he's like really kind of like scared, but he also really wants to just let go and yeah. fuck her dragon dude style. That's and he one. starts to pick up speed, and he's constantly listening to make sure he's not hurting her. And then his vision change, his back arches, his hips thrust, her heels <gasps> drum against his hips, and he spreads her wide, and then her his vision changes. And he wasn't in the car, he was flying with another beast that he couldn't see, and there was a glimmer of gold off toward the sun, and he wanted it, he lusted for it, and he knew it wanted him to chase it, and, and he wheels in midair and then lands back in his body. No idea what all that meant, I'm sure it'll make sense later. What the hell? He yeah. has an out of body transcendent experience where he's flying. Yeah. And he was certain he just had a memory of something only had never happened to him before. And he was like, well, that was weird. But anyway, yeah. back to fucking. Here I am. Yeah, I might as well finish what I'm doing here. This seems fine. I'm I'm presently engaged in this activity. I might as well finish yeah. this off. And but he is still watching his dragon. Yeah. Fuck her. Yeah. And at some point, the dragon's like, nope, nope, you have to take over. You have to take over. Like, you got to you gotta finish this off because I'm I'm getting too much. It's going to be too much. I'm getting too close to the surface. And apparently what Damien is afraid of is that his dragon will take over and he will not be able to shift back to human because his dragon will be in control. But it doesn't seem like yeah. they're fighting over control all the time, no, just I in mean- times of great emotion. Yes. I think in this case, his, um, because I did start reading book two. <laughs> oh, of course. Um, yep. There's a prologue where he has a dream. Um, oh. There's dream sex in a prologue. And I think what he's worried about is if his dragon takes over and he shifts into a 60 foot beast while still inside her. Oh, fair. that would become a problem. Fair problems. Understanding yeah. The, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because then in the um in the prologue of the next wow. one, because he's having <laughs> right, Ooh, because he's having dream sex with her. Mm-hmm. I know. He like only pulls out his dragon wings, and he says, "I've never partially shifted before. Oh, this is great. I'll cradle her in my wings while I fuck her." Um, but anyway, so yeah, he's never he's never partially shifted. So it's either man or beast. So how big is the dragon's wiener? I know. I don't know. Because he's already so big, he's had to, like, you know, stretch her out and do some calisthenics down there. And, like, yeah. Apparently, he three fingers was enough to, like, accommodate his girthiness later on. And he the, still had to go slow. He had to, so, yeah, fine. Yeah. I so mean, it's more than that. You could also use lube. That is a choice that you can make Whoa. at this time. No that would probably way. help. But, you know, using lube means that she's not wet enough, even though that's just very silly. But that's, okay, fine. Doesn't make any sense. Yeah. How big is the dragon's wheelie? It's got to be 10 feet, right? Right? Would she just like explode like a cantaloupe? Just... Yes. Sorry, I listeners. Think, Apologies I for think that. He, ah, Damn. She would. Okay. This is definitely a book that you should read while you like after you've had a little edible. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. This is going to give you some thoughts. So anyway. Yeah. So this this part I didn't love because she he's going and he's going and his dragon overlaps him and he's... She starts to orgasm. and He thrusts in time with the waves of her orgasm. Mm-hmm. And she's like, please, please, begging him for his load. Load! Oh, begging him for that. his load. Didn't need his load. Oh, I, uh, no one needs the load. No, no, I no. I loved it. I'm not going to lie to no, you. No, that was not my word. That You can have that one. That's on for that you. That was... No, it was so entertaining. More for as you, soon as it, not for it me. It came through the audiobook, and I was like, "Ball!" Like in my shower, <laughs> it was incredible. Begging for his load, begging <gasps> for his load. I've yeah. never begged for a load in my life. Oh, what is God. that? Oh boy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But well, he and shouted he gives and it shot to her. himself inside her. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me think of one of those little cork guns. Yeah. Absolutely. There he goes. 
and he felt dizzy. Pistons and beats and hot. Sh- Her pussy sucks his hot silver out of him. So apparently, his hot silver. Apparently, his jizz is like I don't know, liquid mercury or something. <gasps> like his blood is green, so I'll go with it. That's fine. Absolutely. And then he feels like he's in two places at once. One of him was here, and the other was flying back in the realms where his dragon didn't have to worry about being seen, taking the purest pleasure in the air. And then he lands alone. In his earthly body with her wound around him and he's still inside her. And he was like, oh, well, that's what it feels like to be mated. Yeah, okay. that's mate sex right there. Yeah. Never want to give that up. Never want to give her up. No. Nope. He's fully committed. He is going to, he's marrying her. Yep. He's going to figure out a way to keep her safe. Yep. He's in it to win it. But and he's not telling her that. No. This is all no. on his side. He's just buttoning up his pants and stuff. Yeah, he's fine. And so because of his U-turn earlier, she's like, well, Um, I'm not going to let that happen again. Because last time they'd had sex, he'd fucked her up against the wall and then stuck a hundred dollar bill under the strap of her gown for some unknown reason that still makes no sense. Yeah. She's like, "Okay, well, I know, judging from past experience, that I am about to be emotionally crushed by this bonehead. Right. So even though she is deeply moved by the sexy times that they have just had, and it was outstandingly good sex, and she's like, fuck me, I'm falling for him. She's never felt this way before. And she's like, I do not catch feelings. He's putting Mm -hmm. on his jeans. I am breathless and afraid. He is a rich playboy who could become a dragon, and she is just his fuck buddy. She's a plaything. Even if he didn't want to leave her, eventually he would. And she's like, you know what? I'm not. I'm not. I'm I'm nipping this in the bud. And so she's like, okay, well, thank you. And she arranges her coat and she goes, thank you so much for an interesting evening. Now, if you are Midwestern, the use of uh interesting right there is Uh brutal. Because Uh if you're like Midwestern and you're like, oh, wow, Melody, these cookies are so interesting. What that means is Uh your cookies taste like shit. Yeah, they're terrible cookies. Are they even cookies? So if that is a Midwestern interesting, she has just knifed him in the heart. And he gets it. Oh, he's like, excuse me? Yeah. I said, thank you for an interesting evening, Mr. Blackwood. He goes, you're joking, right, princess? She's like, well, if you could please finish taking me home, I would appreciate it. And he's like, Oh, oh, okay. I wish, I wish things were, were different. And she said, you said it yourself and here, you're a jerk and you're dangerous. And as good as I am at dating assholes, apparently I'm not willing to go there again. Not even for you. For you. And she is desperately trying to cut the connection between them, even if she has to be cruel because she needs to get away from him and like not be stuck in this painful experience. Right. And he's like, I'm not like the others. And she goes, really? Because I have a hundred dollar bill that says otherwise. He takes a big gulp of air as if he had been gut punched, didn't say another word, just twisted back to the steering wheel and turned on the car. Yeah. At some point, I don't know if it's before or after this, one of my favorite things that happens in this scene is that he's been talking about creating technology that will... um, that will anticipate when the gates are going to open in yes. any spot. Yes. So that they can stop it before yeah, the monsters get through. Yeah, that's what happens next. Through. He's like making conversation. Yeah, and he's like, I love it because it, it feels so sheepish. You know, he's like, just FYI, like my my life's not going to be as dangerous in you the know, future later on. Yeah, and he's like super upset because he knows there's <laughs> a wall between them and the dragon inside yeah. him is just like, just fly over it, you dumbass. Yeah. And... He, he she says, like, you know, okay, so you're not going to be as dangerous, but you're still going to be a jerk. I won't always da- be dangerous. Yeah, you're just a jerk. And he's like, I'm Oof. trying to keep you safe. And she goes, you did. Congratulations. You were right. You are dangerous to people who might care. <gasps> Ouch. I mean, and no lies detected. None. No. And he knows it. And so he drops her off. Yeah. He's like, but we just... We, we just, you know, went to Bone Town. He was like, yeah, that was really great, too. But I'm telling you, no. <gasps> he says, no. She says, she says no. it's not just my last name. Nice job. Uh-huh. Nice, 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 nice. Uh-huh. She, he knew that that wasn't really how one was supposed to say her name. 
She was uh-huh. telling him the family name given to clueless outsiders who couldn't be bothered to learn the difference. And she was telling <sighs> him he wasn't anything to her and it hurt. Ouch. Yeah. And I was wrong at the start of your episode about how to say it. I was going with the, I was leaning towards the Vietnamese pronunciation. Oh, oh, oh. I yeah. don't know that that's true, but the you were going with the, the O instead yeah, the, of the no. ah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's so many videos on how to pronounce this name, let me tell you. So, oh, absolutely. So many YouTube videos. Anyway. She is using her, I love this, she's using her name to make it clear that she's giving him an incorrect outsider's pronunciation because she, he is nothing to her. Because he doesn't know her anymore. Ouch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah, yeah, yikes. He gives her his coat because the coat that she's wearing is not enough. She kicks off the last remnants of her dress and wraps herself in his coat and she goes, I'm going to go now. And then she looks at him and she says, I don't regret a thing. Oh. And he says, this isn't the end. She didn't turn around. She just kept walking, kept walking away from him. And his dragon is like, no, uh uh-uh, no, go. And he goes, this is for the best. There is no way he was going through the rest of his life without her. Whatever he had to do to make her trust him again, to make her feel safe, he would get it done. She was fierce and beautiful and she was his. And there was no way in hell this was over. Readers, Andy and Damien's story continues in Dragon Destin. Keep reading for an excerpt. That's the one. Yep. That's where it ends. And it's a four book series. series. And as I said when we started recording, I said in your episode, I think this is a really well done arc because they have achieved sexual satisfaction. They are totally Mm -hmm. into each other. He's realized that she's his mate. But he has to start over to win back her trust because he fucked yep. up so bad. He fucked up so bad. And she has to process the deaths of her co-workers. Apparently, she, the co-worker, she's going to be the only one who knows that this person died. Oh, yeah. But the story continues. Dragon Destined. <gasps> I got the box set via Hoopla. Ooh, so, I love Hoopla. So what did you yeah. think of this book? I really liked this book a lot. It was extremely I, enjoyable. I lo- I really, really, really loved it. Yeah. I liked, like, I don't know. I liked that it was unputdownable, you know? Oh, yeah. I churned um, through this. I started it at night and I needed to go to bed and I woke up the next mm-hmm. morning and finished it in bed. Yeah. It's so, it's so good. And like the... The way that they do so much with every sentence yes. is it's also really top-notch. And the way in which they use her name and uh-huh. her living above a bakery and that's why she smells good. Yep. Like it's, it's very, very detailed and the specificity makes it good. Yeah. And, and like the specificity is also nuanced. Yes. Yeah. It has, it has depth to it that it's not like relying on a lot of paranormal shorthand. Yeah. Which I appreciate. Yeah. This was very clever. It really was. Very All the clever. Way through. Very clever. And the sex was hot. The, the sex s- scenes were good. I mean, I'm, I, I, I remain baffled by car sex. Oh, uh, all like, the time. No matter how, I mean, you could be talking about a Cadillac Escalade. It's still going to be a little awkward because mm-hmm. there's a, it's a seat with seat back. You're like your mm-hmm. feet are in the wheel well just kicking around back there. Yeah. Or like you're laying across the back, but like all the seat belt clicker things are or digging your, into your everywhere. spine Come like on. none of this is comfy this is like horny teenagers with nowhere to go have sex in the car these people That's just right. pull over on an, under an underpass and go to bone town <laughs> yeah you own a castle for god's sake and you can fly right? come on now like but no they're they, they, desperate yeah they they center console what center console we're gonna flip oh, back no. and forth between seats and go to bone town <laughs> it's so good yeah no agreed Agreed. And every time somebody tries to do it, I'm like, you know, it was a valiant attempt at logistics. Yeah. You did a great job. Yeah. It's just never going to It's never, never going to be the thing for me. feel real to me. It's yeah. never going to be the thing for me either. No, not yeah. a chance. But thank you for introducing this series to me. I'm very excited yeah. to keep reading it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. Oh, um, always. This is so much yeah. fun. And your listeners are so lovely. And then they send me email to tell me how much they enjoyed my being on the show. So thank Yay! you for that. It's super oh. great. I love that. Yeah. And then I might, I might actually finish this series on Patreon. Ooh. Yeah. I think, well, because I'm going to read it anyway. I got to tell somebody about it. Yeah. (laughs) You absolutely should. Yeah. Absolutely should. So mm, I'm excited. I'm going to nom it hard. 
And that brings us to the end of this week's episode. Thank you to Melody for inviting me back. It is always so much fun. And thank you to the Heaving Bosoms listeners. Hi. Thanks for hanging out with us today. It's lovely to have you. I always end each episode with a terrible joke. And this joke comes from Brawler inside our fabulous Patreon Discord. Okay, hold on to your butts because this is really bad. What is it called when a group of killer whales work together to damage a yacht? Give up? What's it called when a group of killer whales work together to damage a yacht? An orchestrated attack. <laughs> orchestrated. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. We hope you have a wonderful weekend and we'll see you back here next week. Some more podcast trashy books is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. You can find outstanding podcasts to subscribe to at frolic.media slash podcasts.